welcome to the British Lake District, arguably the most calming, serene and beautiful location in the whole country. I come here a few times every year because there's always so many fun outdoor activities to do and it's just such a cosy, warm, inviting place to visit. And if you're ever stuck for some ideas of things that you can do that involve having a sober weekend, having a chilled one with friends, family or even a solo trip, then please watch this video and leave your own recommendations as well. So I began my trip trying out some solo travel. I'm a bit of an anxious traveller, so I find solo activities really hard. So this was my way of testing myself. I'd booked myself in at a hostel, something I swore I wouldn't do, but it was £20 a night in a women's dorm. As soon as I arrived at Windermere Station, I got on this open tour bus that was just outside and I absolutely loved it. It felt really exhilarating driving past all the scenery. It cost me £2 to get to my location. I did actually miss my stop because I was enjoying myself too much filming all of the beautiful scenery and the lakes you can just see on the left. It was just such a blast. I absolutely loved it. And the sun was shining. It felt like fate that I was here. I had so much anxiety in the build-up of attending that it seems ridiculous now. I was in the nature, enjoying myself. Even on my own, I felt really limitless in what I could do. So I arrived in Ambleside, a little village close to Windermere. And the youth hostel was actually a little bit further away than I was expecting. I got off one stop too far and had to walk back for about 10 minutes. Here's me about to realise that that's what's happened. Dragging my little suitcase all the way. But it's fine. It's just an adventure, I was telling myself. And this is the first real sunshine I've had this spring. The clouds look so fluffy here. Now, this is very North England, so the cold is quite prominent. Even though I'm only a couple of hours further south, I do feel like it's more chilly here, so do be prepared for that. Even in late April, I thought it would be warmer than it was. You can tell by my outfit's a little bit later, but oh well. Here I am at the YHA Ambleside now. I wouldn't usually like to stay in a hostel at all. I swore after a couple in Asia that that was it for me. I was done, I'm past my mid-twenties, and I just thought, sod it, I'm not doing it anymore. I don't want to. But this was actually okay. This is a bed dorm for six women. And when you're in a women's dorm, you do feel quite safe. And at £20 a night, I really couldn't argue. I couldn't afford something on my own just for one night. So here's my outfit. I thought I'd dress in a nice cute spring outfit, forgetting that it's about one degrees out and having to wear my coat on top of everything. But there we are. I was walking along and there was lots of big groups of guys going rowing and things. And obviously it's right on the lake, which is an amazing location for a hostel. The amount of I stayed in in Europe that were just dreadful locations. It's amazing. And it's such a family style place as well. I really would recommend it. Anxiety is a little bit high at the moment. I just feel like people are looking at me walking around by myself and wondering why I'm by myself, but they probably don't give a shit. It's just this sort of feeling that I'm taking up space or I look strange. I have to just decompress, spend some minutes alone and just remember that it's really not that deep. My biggest test will be if I dare get my camera stand out and just put my phone on it so I can actually take a picture of myself. Um, since I'm on my own, no one can take a photo of me. So I'm gonna try and do that now because it's pretty empty here. Oh. And look at that, I was brave enough to get my stand out and have a quick picture and vid session. I couldn't film anything more long term. I really had an idea that I was gonna film some ASMR there, but no, it just wasn't gonna happen. So I got my headphones on and I felt really motivated walking into the village. It's only like a 10 minute walk, so it's really easy. And I wanted to play crazy golf. Now, I wanted to wait for my boyfriend to arrive tomorrow to do this, but then I thought, sod it, I'll try it on my own. Obviously, it's going to take me like five minutes on my own, but whatever, it's something to do. I was waiting for my reservation at a restaurant where I was going to eat alone. And to be honest, I was a bit of an unappalling player. I wasn't really trying. There was a lot of groups around me and I felt really anxious that they were talking about me being on my own, even though they probably weren't at all. But you know, these things just run through your head. It's wild. I went to the pub, which is somewhere I really like to go in the early evening, especially in the week when it's quiet and just have a relaxing drink. I only drink Diet Coke. I'm not much of an alcohol drinker. And it felt really actually soothing to just read my book in peace. And it was a lovely, cosy pub as well, the Ambleside Inn. There were a few others that were a little bit more rowdy. So I really recommend this one. Obviously, a lot of people come here for the weekend and in big groups. And that's fine. But sometimes it can be a bit intimidating, especially if you're a girl on your own. Now, to my reservation, I booked a vegetarian Italian place. Eating alone in a restaurant in the evening is something I failed to do on my last solo trip. 
I was too scared. I just couldn't face taking up space that a busy family or something might want. I feel so overwhelmed. But here's me actually having a meal and a full on dessert and everything. So it was totally fine. I don't know what I was so scared of. I mean, did I think people were looking at me and maybe saying, oh, she's on her own? Maybe a little bit, but I don't know. I just had to get on with it. And the staff were really nice. And I just loved it. I love going to vegetarian or vegan places because I'm a vegan and it was just lovely. And they had a great cinema deal as well. They have a cinema attached. This is their country guest house that I know they own as well. And it's just lovely. I'd love to stay there, but they actually didn't have any space for me that weekend. I did ask. So I'm walking back to my hostel now and the sun is setting. It's about eight o'clock. It sets quite late now. We're getting to the wards of the summer in England. And this hostel is really lovely. I'm trying to show you the colours in the sky because in England, it's especially this far north, you don't get that much colour. In Australia last year, there was so much colour in the sky and that is just not the reality in England. But this was so beautiful. Look at that orange cloud sky. Oh, it's amazing. And I was just really feeling like I'd made the right choice by doing a solo night. Now, this is the very next morning. I did not sleep well at all. To be honest, I'm a light sleeper and it was never going to go brilliantly in a dorm. But I wanted to try it. Obviously, I look pretty ratty and undone. <laughs> so I was going to do all my makeup in the car. My partner arrived and we went for a drive. We wanted to go all the way to Keswick, which is as far north in the lakes that I've ever been. People usually choose like Windermere and Ambleside because they're closer to the south. We drove to go to this cafe, which is totally plant-based, for it to be shut with absolutely no warning whatsoever. We found another little place that had a lovely vegan wrap meal that I enjoyed. My partner had a curry and a nice juice watching the markets. It's a nice little market town is Keswick. It's quite big as well. The, the other towns in the lakes I find are quite small. And it was a nice place as well that advertised no alcohol, which I thought was really cool because obviously I don't drink. So it's nice that places are getting more into that sober weekends and stuff because people who don't want to be around alcohol and drinking all the time can feel a little bit intimidated. Now, one of the top activities in Keswick is to go to the Lady Hope's Garden, which is a beautiful public space and this little birthday hut in a dome. I thought it was so cute. The IP afternoon tea. I mean, that would just be the perfect present for some people I know. And the park had loads of lovely games as well. If you're into crazy golf, pitch and put, they have these remote control boats. And the views are just outstanding, Cumbria. Everywhere you go, the views are just amazing. We wanted to walk down to the waterfront to see, and this is another top rated activity, and I put it on my blog as well, in the top 36 things to do in 2024 in the Lake District, because it's a free thing. Obviously, it can be quite cold, and I was pretty cold this day. Approaching the summer months, this is an amazing picnic spot, to be honest. I really regret not bringing my blanket. I just sat on the dirt and it was totally fine. But you can skim rocks on the water. There's lots of lovely dogs going past. It's quiet and it's serene. And it's right next to the theatre by the lake. So anyone that likes plays and things and local culture, you'll find a little bit there. But the views are just really outstanding and amazing. I'd never seen anything like it. Keswick and the North Lake seem to be more surrounded by mountains rather than the South Lakes, which I think are a little bit less so. It's just as beautiful, but just different. And I'm going to think about staying in Keswick next time or somewhere nearby to explore different areas. I am someone that likes to stick to places I know, which can sometimes be a mistake when you travel because you don't get to see things as much as you'd like. I'm trying to grow from my anxiety and stop going to my comfort zones. It's going to be a long journey for me to do that. The Lakes is a perfect couples destination, to be honest. I felt like there was lots of really nice romantic spots. I enjoyed it so much. Even if you're a solo traveller, there's lots of really friendly faces here. People in the hostels were all really communicative. I found them really kind and wanting to talk. Some people don't like that. But yeah, if you're looking somewhere to make friends on a solo trip, it's definitely somewhere that you could enjoy. Now, I booked an activity that was bound to scare me, and that was alpacas. Now, I am vegan, but to be honest, I'm scared of most animals and things. I like to keep them at a distance. But you could meet alpacas that have been rescued from people that just couldn't take care of them anymore. They're just animals that graze, and you can give them some treats here. And it was really nice. You can do some walking activities too. But when I got in there, I suddenly got really scared. And I was hiding behind my boyfriend. Those little clips of me stood near them. Honestly, the few seconds, I was not too scared of them. It's really rare that they're going to bite you. And if you get close, they might kick you. But apparently it doesn't hurt. 
I really wasn't willing to take the risk. They were so cute though. They were really nice. Anyone that loves animals, it's a really good activity. It cost me about £18, which is considered more of a donation to the cause, which I really, really liked. They have a couple of locations as well. This was at the Lingholm Estate, which had a beautiful gardens and a little cafe. I had a nice slice of cake in. So it's a really nice afternoon activity, to be honest. Someone that likes a slow holiday, as long as you can drive, because it is quite difficult to get to. I would highly, highly recommend it. Now, I wanted to go see the Stone Circle, which is another top activity, always full of tourists, but when I arrived, it was near the end of the day, freezing cold, and here it is, the Stone Circle, and the Outlander fans will know how fun these are to visit. It's very well protected, as is the whole Lake District. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and doing anything to it seems really, really difficult. And it's really unmodern as well, in a way, like, there's not many trains and things, but, you know, it was a beautiful place. As soon as I pulled up, a bus full of tourists got off. So if you're there and there's not many visitors, you're super lucky. It was time to go check into my B&B. I've never actually stayed in a B&B, I don't think. I always get a bit intimidated by the thought that you have to really chit-chat with people. I'm an introverted person. I don't love small talk. So I get a little bit intimidated by the B&B way of life. But actually, it was lovely. It was like grandma's house in the best way. Really comforting old English houses. And it was a cosy little room, perfect for one night. I didn't fancy doing much in the evening. I never really do. So we went on a nice quiet walk through the village. Looked at some little cafes and things. There were some really busy bars, like I mentioned, full of groups. Some of them just groups of guys. And had I been on my own, that would have been quite intimidating. So instead, I got some snacks. Had a nice, quiet night in my room. Really early sleep, ready for the next day because I had another jam-packed day. I always try and pack in as much as possible. And I do tons and tons of research to find the most fun activities. The breakfast in the B&B was really nice. They could do me a little vegan breakfast, which I really appreciated. So I really loved it. And I would definitely stay in a B&B again. I'm going to try some more more especially supporting the local businesses in Cumbria is really important there's not many chain hotels and that's for very good reason so we did another round of the crazy golf first thing in the morning I know it's a bit of a waste of time but I always win I don't know why my boyfriend challenges me I'm always gonna win him I played pitch and put a lot as a young kid anyways we really wanted to visit Grasmere but we didn't have much time at all I had a lovely spa afternoon booked which was the main event so instead we just drove through it and drove all along the hills in the scenic route to get to our lunch spot and it was actually really nice I've been here before but I totally forgot but it has some amazing walking routes when I looked it up and there's people walking everywhere so if you are looking for an easy going hike that has like some pubs and cafes try things around Grasmere now this is Chester's by the river you might have seen it on TikTok and things it's a beautiful lake spot just look at my lunch a curry at chips and it's almost completely vegan they only have a couple of dairy items which is really really comforting they don't really advertise it it's very subtle had some chips as well as per and it was amazing flatbread hummus oils that is my favorite type of meal it's like girl dinner type thing i just loved it it's a really nice outdoor location as well it's always really busy so the fact that we got a good seat was really 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 lucky <laughs> come here as early as you can it's definitely worth it and they do takeouts and they have outdoor seating in the front and back so yeah it's definitely a possibility they have limited parking though and it's also quite rural anyway on we went to our spa afternoon suddenly i got a little bit anxious going in it looked really upmarket and classy and i just thought i don't fit in anyway it was really nice i've never done a proper spa afternoon like this where it cost 99 a head for afternoon tea and the spa. And we just had three hours in there, all the different pools, the jacuzzis, the saunas. It was amazing. I absolutely loved it. The outdoor area was great. It was bloody freezing out of the water, but really worth it. And I think if you could go just to do the spa, if you're not into afternoon tea or anything, you can probably call up and get a good deal. Definitely give it a try, especially if you're someone that likes indoor quiet activities. It's worth a visit. This is the Lowood Bay Resort Spa. They have a hotel as well, but I definitely couldn't afford to stay this time. And it's really encouraged me to look up more spas in the UK and have some more spa afternoons because I just had a blast here. And it's a really fun couples activity as well. You don't have to get any treatment. You can just enjoy the public areas, read your book, etc., which is what I did. And I got a bit of content and stuff. I just really enjoyed it. There was a few people here on their anniversary and it was definitely quite busy. But if you came the week, it would probably be easier on you and less busy for sure. 
there was staff everywhere and they dished out some stuff like frozen watermelon you can see me having. I had tons of nice drinks and really enjoyed the sauna with a view. That was my favourite bit. The whole hotel was just beautiful to be honest. And here's me enjoying the afternoon tea. I stayed in my robe but really regretted it because guess what? My boyfriend came out fully dressed in normal clothes which really pissed me off. We'd agreed to both come out in robes but he felt too intimidated and anxious to do it. So I was on my own there, but it was a really unique afternoon tea, to be honest. There were even chips on there. But any afternoon tea with chips on has definitely won my favour. Now, that is the end of my lovely little weekend away. I hope you got some ideas and inspiration and will come and try the latest shit out for yourself. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.